happened to us is cosmetricity. <laughs> Y'all know we studied chemistry, so now we got to go into electricity because it plays such an important role in our profession. We use all of our electrical equipment, curling irons and blow dryers and hair dryers. And we also studied in 103 about electrical currents that we use for treatments such as galvanic, sinusoidal, ferratic, high frequency. Electricity is not matter. It doesn't have physical or chemical properties. It doesn't occupy space, but occasionally we do see it, such as lightning on a stormy night, or sometimes we've stuck a plug into a socket and we've seen the sparks fly. That's electricity. Electricity is a form of energy that when in motion exhibits magnetic, chemical, or thermal effects. It is a flow of electrons which are negatively charged subatomic particles. An electric current is the flow of electricity along a conductor. All substances can be classified as conductors or insulators depending on the ease with which an electric current can be transmitted through them. Conductor is any substance, material, or medium that conducts electricity. Most metals are good conductors. Copper is a particularly good conductor and is used in electric wiring and electric motors. Although pure water does not conduct electricity, the ions in ordinary water make it a good conductor. This explains why you should not swim in a lake during a lightning storm. What about us? Are we conductors or insulators? Conductors. conductors. So what happens when we've let our curling iron lay on electrical cord and burn the insulation off and we reach down and grab it? You're going to get shocked. This is why in our facial treatments that we do not allow our client to touch metal. That's why we don't use it on clients that have metal implants either. It's because of the electrical current going through them. An insulator or non-conductor is a substance that does not easily transmit electricity. Rubber, silk, wood, glass, and cement are good insulators. Electric wires are composed of twisted metal threads or conductors covered with rubber or silk. They're, that are the insulators. A complete circuit is the path of an electric current from the generating source through conductors and back to its original source. And we've got to understand about this complete circuit concept. And first off to understand how it works is, let's say that the generating plant is here. Our house is here. And a tree falls over the lines here. Well, we may not understand why then did it knock our electricity out because the source was here and our house here and it's broken on further down. That's because it cannot make that complete circuit. That's what we're talking about when we talked about electrical treatments that we uh, strap the electrode on the client's arm and then we have the other electrode in our hand. We want it to make that complete circuit. If we didn't hook this one up, there's no complete circuit made and the treatment is ineffective. So that's what a complete circuit is. From where it goes to where it's going and then back again. There are two types of electrical current. Direct current, commonly referred to as DC, is a constant even flowing current that travels in one direction only and produces a chemical reaction. Flashlights, cellular telephones, and cordless electric clippers use the direct current produced by batteries. The battery in your car stores electrical energy. Without it, your car would not start in the morning. A converter is an apparatus that changes direct current to alternating current. Some cars have converters that allow you to use appliances that would normally be plugged into an electrical wall outlet with the car's battery instead. So we were using converters and rectifiers when we was fairly young. Most of us had our CD players or tape players and transistor radios and shavers and all that good stuff. Alternating current or AC is a rapid and interrupted current flowing first in one direction and then in the opposite direction. This current produces a mechanical action. Now notice direct current produces chemical. Alternating current produces mechanical. Hair dries and curling irons that plug into a wall outlet use alternating current. 
The generator in your car produces the electrical energy needed to recharge your car's battery. A rectifier is an apparatus that changes alternating current to direct current. Cordless electric clippers and battery chargers use a rectifier to convert the AC current from electrical wall outlet to DC current needed to recharge the batteries. Our electrical measurements. The flow of an electric current can be compared to water flowing through a garden hose. Individual electrons flow through a wire in the same way that individual water molecules flow through a hose. A volt or voltage is the unit that measures the pressure of force that pushes the flow of electrons forward through a conductor. Much like the water pressure that pushes the water molecules through the hose. And y'all know about water pressure on the hoses back there, don't you? <laughs> Several of y'all do. They put a lot of pressure on it. What happened to you? Wet the ceiling and the clients and the other students. Without pressure, neither water nor electrons would flow. Car batteries are 12 volts. Normal wall sockets that power our hair dryers and curling irons are 110 volts. And most air conditioners and clothes dryers run on 220 volts. A higher voltage indicates more pressure, more force, and more power. An amp or ampere is the unit that measures the strength of the electric current. Or another way to put it is the number of electrons flowing through a wire. Just as a water hose must be able to expand as the amount of water flowing through it increases, so a wire must expand with an increase in the amount of electrons or amps. A hair dryer rated at 10 amps must have a cord that is twice as thick as one rated at 5 amps. Otherwise, the cord might overheat, start a fire. A higher amp rating indicates a greater number of electrons <laughs> and a stronger current. This explains some of the difference in the equipment we use. It seems to get a lot hotter than those you buy at the Walmart or wherever, and it is. They're more professionally rated tools. A milliampere is one thousandth of an ampere. The current for facial and scalp treatments is measured in milliamperes. An ampere current would be much too strong. So that means that we can give our client a little electrical shock if we're not careful. We might even cause them to get a little burn from handling metal. But we cannot electrocute them, can we? It's not strong enough. An ohm is a unit that measures the resistance of an electric current. Current will not flow through a conductor unless the force or volts is stronger than the resistance or ohms. A watt is a measurement of how much electric energy is being used in one second. Have y'all noticed that a lot of our blow dryers are rated by wattage? How many watts they have, the higher the watts, the more power they have. I want you to look on them when you go back <laughs> in the lab. A 40-watt light bulb uses 40 watts of energy per second. A kilowatt is 1,000 watts. The electricity in our homes are measured in kilowatt hours. So a 1,000-watt hair dryer uses 1,000 watts of energy per second. So it really costs us a little more to use the higher wattage, but we do more clients, so we take in more money. And clients like that, we're all about 45 minutes behind, so they like that, get in and it blow dries quicker. And it also gives you a good opportunity to sell them one of these blow dryers, because they like to get that type of equipment. We have some safety devices, and I want to tell you a little bit about cosmetologists, and I've heard several electricians say this. We are either the bravest are the stupidest people in the world. I have a tendency to think that we're very brave. But we'll take our regular wall socket, it's got two plugs in it, and we'll go to Walmart or to the hardware store and buy us one that's got six. Plug it in there. Well, we don't call it a surge protector. It's just one of them blocks, so it's right there with us. Then we've got six instead of two. What a wonderful thing. We can plug up two curling irons and blow dryer and our wax heater and all this good stuff. But some of this stuff needs to be over on the other counter, so we'll put us a, an extension cord in one of them that's got two or three plugs on the end of it. 
and the extension cord's going to get in our way. So if you'll notice, the extension cord has got two rows of wires here. And there's a middle place you can tell doesn't have any wire, so if you'll take a long thumbtack or a small nail, you can nail it to the wall with it. Yeah, getting real good now. You turn on all this equipment and one of these safety devices go off. If we're in an older building, the fuse, it blows out and we've got to replace it. Usually it doesn't cross our mind to go undo some of this stuff we've got plugged up there. So we got it all going again, got our new fuse in. The next thing we know, it all goes out again. Our fuse is out again. Or in the case of the circuit breaker, it's tripped, and we've got to go back and trip it, you know, to get it turned back on. So we don't realize that what we're doing is these safety devices saying, look, you have got to undo some of this stuff you've got plugged into there. After a while, I'm going to quit warning you, and I'm going to let the house catch on fire or the building catch on fire. So watch about plugging those things in. How dangerous was that nail that we put through the extension cord? Very, because those wires and they are getting hot now. That's what's causing our fuse or our circuit breaker. So then it comes in contact with the metal or could we get shocked from it? Yes, we don't know for a fact that we missed all the wires. The reason I'm telling you this, have more wires added, more sockets added, you don't add them, and get somebody to make sure they're put on a separate fuse. It's a safety thing. I worked in a salon that burned down. And it wasn't a nice experience. As a matter of fact, it took me several months to get over it just from the, the trauma of it. And then it happened on a Friday night. And I was totally booked along with two or three others that worked in there on Saturday morning. And it was a little bit comical the way it happened. If you could look at the comical side of it. There was a photographer we had down doing glamour shots in the salon. Of course, they weren't called glamour shots then. You know, this is called on the before and afters. And he was on his first job out on his own after he'd got through with his training to come out of Atlanta. So he had been with us like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and Friday, and we'd all decided to go out and eat except the one that shampooed for us. She couldn't get a babysitter, and she couldn't go out. So we all take him, our husbands and all, and we all go out to eat. When we got through, several of us went back over to my house. Well, about 9.30, the shampoo girl calls and said, y'all better get to the beauty shop, it's burning down. Well, I'd answered the phone. I thought she was just pulling a joke on us since she couldn't go out with us because she was a jokester. And I said, are you lying? And I hung up. <laughs> About five minutes, she called back. She said, I am not cutting up. Y'all need to get to the beauty shop. It's burning down. So we all pile in cars and take off, and guess what? It was already gone. Of course, I don't know what she wanted us to go for. We couldn't have helped with it. But it had actually burned. And it was a very traumatic experience because now you're talking about this time of night and time we can get our wits about us enough to discover where, where are we going to all go with a bunch of clients for the next day. You know, and Saturdays, a lot of hairdressers even then didn't work on Saturday. And you know people are dependent on you for their hairdo to last all week, you know, while they go to work. So it was a very traumatic experience. Um, it was not, and it burned up all his equipment. The rest of the story is he was out on his first job, and he had left his camera, and I was sitting there in the salon. And it burned all of it up. He was just about frantic, you know, what's the company going to say? But it was not caused from electrical short. Thank goodness it was a, they had a gas heater in there, a space heater, and it happened with it. I guess it had been left on or something. All right, so a fuse is something that tells us that we've overloaded or there's a problem in the wiring, and it goes out and we have to replace it. It's in older buildings. Circuit breaker is a newer thing. It's just a switch that has to be flipped, but it does no good to go back there and keep flipping it. you got to undo what your problem is. Some other electrical equipment safety. Since we work with electricity so much, we've got to be concerned with our own safety and our clients, such as the raw wire example I gave you a while ago. You don't want that to take a chance of it bumping up next to your client. And I admit that putting um, electrical tape around it will work for a little bit until you can get somebody there, but get you another piece of equipment or get it repaired. And don't just call yourself, gonna replace the cord yourself, because you can do that easily. But you got to make sure that you have got the cord that is big enough to withstand pulling that appliance. All electrical equipment should be inspected regularly. Careless electrical connections and overloaded circuits can result in electrical shock, a burn, or even a serious fire. 
The principle of grounding is another important way of promoting electrical safety. And we know what the grounding is now. It's that third little plug that's in there, and so many more things are requiring it now. And it's also the wider plug. You know, when, when I first started training, everything had two little prongs, and they, all, they were both the same size. Now one of them's larger than the other. And I found the way to avoid that. I take it to the grinder and grind them off. I am serious. And it worked then. What I didn't realize at that point in time that I was getting rid of what protected me. You know, because that's making sure you don't plug it in wrong. So the live connection supplies current to the circuit. The ground connection completes the circuit and carries the current safely away to the ground. If you look closely at electrical plug with two rectangular prongs, you see that one is slightly larger than the other, and there is a reason for that. This guarantees that the plug can only be inserted one way and protects you and your client from electrical shock in the event of a short circuit. For added protection, some appliances have a third circular electrical connection that provides an additional ground. This extra ground is designed to guarantee a safe path of electricity if the first ground fails or is improperly connected. Appliances with a third circular ground offer the most protection for you and your client. Careful attention to our electrical safety helps to eliminate accidents and to ensure greater client satisfaction. Some reminders about the safe use of electricity. All electrical appliances you use should be UL certified. <coughs> we have a caution about UL certification, and that's that Underwriters Laboratory certifies the safety of electrical appliances. Curling irons, hair dryers, and electric clippers that are UL approved are certified to be safe when used according to manufacturer's directions. So always look for the UL symbol. It's the little round with the UL. You'll notice side of the road sometime, especially on the weekends and at the first of the month, you'll see trucks with a lot of stuff unloaded. Sometimes it's furniture, rugs, shoes, whatever. And sometimes it's appliances, such as our curling irons and blow dryers. See if you can find that UL seal on it. Usually you don't. So that means that it's not safe to be used or could be where it's not safe to be used. So you buy a cheap piece of equipment, then it burns your beauty shop down. Real good move there, wasn't it? Read all the instructions carefully before using any piece of electrical equipment. Disconnect all appliances when not in use and inspect all your electrical equipment regularly. Keep all wires, plugs, and electrical equipment in good repair. Use only one plug to each outlet. Overloading may cause the fuse to blow out. You and your client should avoid contact with water and metal surfaces when using electricity and do not handle electrical equipment with wet hands. Do not leave your equip your, excuse me, do not leave your client unattended when connected to an electrical device. That is not talking about the hair dryer. That is talking about your galvanic current. Don't walk out and leave her there hooked to it because she may grab something metal trying to get up off the facial bed. Keep electrical cords off the floor and away from people's feet. Getting tangled in a cord could cause you or your client to trip. Do not attempt to clean around electrical outlets while equipment is plugged in it. Unplug everything before you clean around it. Do not touch two metal objects at the same time if either is connected to an electric current. Do not step on or place objects on electrical cords. Do not allow electrical cords to become twisted. And when we start twisting them up and wrapping them around something, sometimes we break cords, break the wires, and they stick out. Do not attempt to repair electrical appliances unless you are qualified. 